Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And today we're here with um, answer to a couple of comments plus a bit of a product review. But before we get started, um, I'd like you to do me a favour. I'm filming this video for the first time with my earbuds in so that the microphone on the earbuds is picking up sound. This is my hope that for those of you who sometimes find my videos hard of hearing or hard to hear, um, hopefully this has cured that because this is the best I can do at the moment. Um, what I'd like you to do, if the sound is okay and you think it's fine, no need to comment. If you just hit the thumbs up, then I'll know, right, the thumbs up actually means that you can hear the sound. If you can't hear it properly, um, just let me know. I mean, and I, I, I don't know what else I can do. I've already got it at the highest recording level I can get. It just means in future I'll have to boost the volume in editing. So, enough of that. Let's get on with what we're going to do. So, I have questions um, come in and, and have had them for a couple of years now. Of, Kerry, do you use alcohol inks on your gel plates? Normally, no. Well, not normally. I've never used them on my gel plate. The reason is I didn't want my gel plate to stain. Um, I knew it wouldn't damage it, just didn't want it to stain. Now, recently, probably about a month ago now, I did a video on... Um, basically packaged to print how to do basic gel printing and to do that video I bought myself a brand new 5x7 gel press so that you guys could see it from the absolute unpackaging. That meant I ended up with three gel presses. Now this one is my very original. This one I have had for absolutely years and I thought you know what why am I worried about staining it it's already stained so I thought right today we're gonna have a bit of a play it'll be a first for me I'm doing it with you here so you can see it in real time and get my thoughts as I do it now the other part of this video is a bit of a product review now you're pretty much familiar with these I should imagine Ranger alcohol inks well I only have four of these uh, three I bought on an American haul and this one I'd already bought and I think I bought this one in I can't remember where I bought it. I bought it in an art shop here in Wales anyway. Um, this is £5.80 okay so when I buy that that's £5.80 which if you're in America it's it's past the six dollar mark anyway. I know it goes a long way but still that's an, that's an investment for me. Um, so anyway, so I just have that and I know that it's £5.80. I was in my hobby craft. Now, this is going to be pertinent to people living in the UK, I should imagine, or those with access to hobby craft, not Hobby Lobby in the States. This is hobby craft in UK. And I wanted to buy some more of these, but I didn't really. I was being very selective about the colours because I wanted to do an autumn type theme. Um, and I was looking along and I could only find these. And I happened to walk into their art department and found these. Um, it's, I should imagine Hobbycraft Art is their own brand. It's 12, um, what do I try to say? 12 different colours. It's 15 mils and this is 14 mils. This was £5.80. This was £15. For, so for the cost of two and a half of these, let's say three of these, I can get 12. But I know and trust the quality of this. I have no idea of the quality of this. So I'm gonna do some swatching because that's what I do with everything I've got new. Let's put this to one side. So I'm gonna swatch all of the colors so we can see them together. Um, they do a 12 pack, as uh, a six pack as well, by the way. But whoever was working there that day hadn't labeled the six pack. So I didn't know what the cost of six of them was compared to the 12. So let's just tip these out because I don't need to be battling with packaging anymore. Right, so as I said, I'm gonna go through each one of these and we're gonna swatch them. Now, let's move those to one side. Now, the way I'm going to swatch it is I've got a bit of mixed media card here. I know that inks work well on smooth papers, on UPO, on stuff like that, but I normally use mixed media, so I'm going to use mixed media. I've got cotton buds here because I've got some isopropyl alcohol in here, which for me is isopropyl alcohol, 
percent proof. I think in the states you call it rubbing alcohol, but I use I use this. I can order it online. My intent is I'm going to find the color amongst all of these bottles. I'm going to rub some alcohol in here in the square, and then I'm going to put a drop to see how it spreads out and moves around. So let's do this and see what these colors actually look like. Now, I I just don't know. I have no idea what they're going to look like. Right, ultramarine blue. That looks pretty intense to me. So let's open the bottle. They've got a safety catch, so you've got to press them down to get them out. And let's get a bit of the isopropyl alcohol on here. It's going to dry up reasonably easy, so I just want to put a drop in there just to see what this looks like. I'll do a bit more than that, actually. And then I'll keep this for reference for the future because I do it with all of my paints, all of my inks. I even do it with um, colored pencils. That's a pretty blue, actually. Um, I'm putting the um, isopropyl alcohol down first because I want to see what colors disperse. Because sometimes when you use an ink or a pigment, you'll find when it bleeds out, it actually gives you more colors. Uh, it immediately went through onto my work surface. So let's. Let's cure that one before I start straight away. Let's get a bit of bit of this down there. Not that I'm precious about this countertop or this piece of kitchen countertop. However, I've just cleaned it. And I'd rather not have to clean it again very quickly. Right, next, yellow. Which one was this? Yellow, oh, it's yellow green. They did have quite a lot of green. So, okay, that's yellow green in their estimation. Press, give it a bit of a twist. Get the old isopropyl alcohol on the go here. If I have to say anything immediately, I'd say that they do look a little bit watery. Like, that looks a bit weak to me. I mean, the blue's okay, but the green, I can even see the yellow separating out immediately, which is why I used alcohol. Right. The next green, I didn't quite understand. I thought that meant permanent green, but I don't know what penanent green is. So, you know, it's just what it is. So that's the next one we're going to do. And by all means, fast forward by this bit, guys, if you want to go on to see me work working on the gel print, uh, on the gel press. I will certainly get to it soon. Okay, they... Yeah, I'm feeling they're not as intense as I expect um, an alcohol ink to be, but you know what? That's okay for what I'm gonna be using them for. So sap green is the next color. Now, as you heard me say, I'm not, not a huge user of inks, and part of that is that they're just a bit beyond the budget, to be honest with you. Right, raw umber is the next one. My initial thought is these are lacking a little bit in the vibrancy that I expect from an alcohol ink. Where's the black is next? That raw umber's really dark, though. Come on, out you come. But my intent is to use them for backgrounds. Um, creating backgrounds that maybe I'll stamp on or I'll do stuff like that. This is the one I'm interested in seeing what it separates out as. Because black, as far as I'm concerned, usually has greens and blues in it. And it really, it really bleeds out. Right, lemon yellow, where's lemon yellow? There's lemon yellow. I think after we've done this, we will compare them to what the label shows me the color is just as I said, this is a product review in my mind. It's something I've spent my money on. Um, something I, 
I want to play with. I just want to know whether it was worth worth the money. That's the orange permanent rose. Now this doesn't look very rose to me, I can tell you. This looks like neon to me. But who knows? I mean, I, I made that mistake with an acrylic paint once. I bought it, it said permanent rose, and it turned out to be neon pink. In fact, it pretty much turned out to be that colour. Okay, that's probably not going to get used very often by me because that's not a colour I would reach for. Scarlet. I quite like the intensity of that red. Next one is purple. Now it could be the flatness of the colour here is due to the paper I'm using, which is mixed media. When I do some of the backgrounds, I do have some smooth white card stock as well, just to see how that works out. And then gonna come in with the very last, which is, I can never say it, Cerulean Blue. That's the name of it, Cerulean Blue. I don't know, I don't do all these fancy names. Right. Okay, um, first impression, they do bleed. But then I think most inks and paints bleed anyway, if they have a way of wicking out. Um, where's the blue that I started with? I've lost the blue already. Ultramarine blue. Well, that's the colour they said it was supposed to be which is a lot darker than what we ended up with. Um, this was the yellow green. Okay, yellow green to me. Mm, it's a bit more yellow than green as far as I'm concerned. What was next? This was the next one. Yeah, not bad, not far off. Um, sap green. Now, sap green to me looks more like that, but this is, to me, it's more of a sort of a foresty green. Uh, raw umber. Well, it looks almost black on the label. It looks almost black there. That's not bad. The black is blacker on the label than it is there, but I think I think that's an acceptable black. As I said, I know black wicks out into other colours. Lemon yellow. That's a bit more orangey than this. What's next? Orange. Orange isn't far off. Yeah, I can accept the permanent rose as that colour. It's a bit more intense. It's a bit more purpley here. Um, the scarlet. I think scarlet's pretty true to itself. Purple. Yeah, I think we can accept purple. And this blue. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so first impression all the way across. Let's put the lid on this so it doesn't evaporate away to be nothing at all. Um, first impression for £15, I'm okay with that selection of colours. Um, if I was comparing it to a Ranger one or another brand of alcohol ink, maybe I wouldn't be as pleased. But you know what? For what I'm going to do, I think I can play with that. Now, this will go into my swatch book so that I know that I've always got it on hand then. Now, I have got mixed media paper here and I've got smooth white cardstock here. Now my intent is to play with both of them and what I intend to do is I'm just going to be putting stuff onto my 5x7 gel plate, the one that's marked, uh, stained, and then I've got another gel plate by the side of me and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the stuff by putting a thin coating of white gess, um, white acrylic paint behind it to pick it up because I have watched a couple of videos where people have used a, a, uh, alcohols on their plate. And to be honest with you, it's, it's a mixed bag of what you can do. If you move quick enough, you can pick up the ink immediately. Um, they do tend to dry out really quickly, which is why people will then pick them up with another medium. Also, um, an alcohol ink will reactivate another alcohol ink. So interesting. So I think what we're going to do is I put IPA into a spritz bottle and I'm just going to spritz the plate before I get to play. Now, I'm going to uncap some of these 
so that I can move relatively quickly. Um, let's see that. Where's that lemon yellow? So just trying to create some interesting background. So I'm spritzing my plate. Um, I'm spritzing it quite well, and that's an instinct. I don't know whether I'm supposed to or not. Oh, OK, that's enough of that, I feel. I went a bit overboard on that. I find the bottles a little difficult to squeeze. And I'm a guy, oh, maybe there's a sweet spot in the bottle that, that you're supposed to squeeze on. So that was yellow-green, which is the green. This is that cerulean blue, which I can't pronounce properly, and the lemon yellow. Right, they're sitting on there quite nicely. I move this around a bit. I don't know whether I should be brayering it. Do you bray ink? I don't know whether you bray ink. I wonder whether I should also spritz the paper. Right, mixed media paper, let's just give it a spritz. Right, let's just go for this because I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, OK, so go straight through the paper. But alcohol markers do the same thing. So, and I picked it up without using um, white acrylic paint because it was stayed wet long enough. So what have I done? OK, maybe I do need to brayer it. OK, right, I'm not... not not enamoured of that at the moment. Right, let's pull out another another couple of colours. I'm not going for aesthetics here, guys. I'm just going playing because I'm just, I want to play. Right, maybe this time I won't put alcohol on here first. Maybe I'll just squeeze them right. This is this peninent green, whatever peninent green is. This is the orange. And this is the permanent rose, the one that I think is a bit, a bit much for me. Right, I've got time to put the lids on these, which is good. My gut feeling is I need to put a brayer on these. Right. So here's my speedball. I wonder what that did to it. Right, let's pick that one up. I've got some permanent white, uh, some smooth white cardstock here. Again, just picked it straight up off the plate. I obviously don't know what I'm doing here, guys. I'm just, as I said, I'm playing with this. OK. Um, Rearing it worked, but it didn't give it, it sort of took away from it a bit. Let's just leave that. There it is. Right. Bit of a clean up on the edge there. Right, so I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do this. I think I liked putting alcohol on here first. And I've noted that I can put alcohol on here and the alcohols don't evaporate quickly which makes me think that the alcohol content is not hugely high in these. Now I'm going to try and do sort of some arty background, right? That's ultim ultramarine. This is purple. And I want, I'm going to get that cerulean blue back in again. And come in from the top with that. Right, I do feel I want to move this around. Now I did see people blowing on their plate. I'm not sure that's something I want to be doing. I do have the windows open here guys because obviously we're dealing with alcohol here and the fumes are quite strong. Not necessarily from the from the coloured inks, actually, which is another indicator that maybe there's not a huge amount of 
alcohol in them. Okay, having a bit of a play. I've got a feeling I'm being a bit too cautious with the amount of ink I'm using, because I the, the people I saw use it were actually quite robust in their application, should we say. Okay, I feel that's giving me something interesting. Um, let's go to the mixed media again. Um, okay, that was unexpected. Um, let's just pick it up. Okay, so if I put the ink down and then spritz it with alcohol, it will move. Okay, interesting. So right, um, I haven't yet picked anything up with with acrylic paint yet. So right, that's the scarlet. And I quite want to put, I don't want to put that one in. Where's the orange gone? I know in the comments I'm going to get loads of people telling me how to do this. And to be honest with you, this is one of those occasions I actually wish this was alive. Because you could be telling me as I'm doing it. Right. I don't want to bray this out. I'm not, not squishing it this time. I'm literally using the brayer. Just to move it around a bit. And this is definitely not a tutorial, guys. This is so not a tutorial. I wonder if I... Okay, so splattering alcohol on it gives me interesting effects. I'm wondering... Let's get this off my fingers before... I destroy my fingernails. Um, I'm wondering if I drop another colour into that. Where's that? Um, where's that yellow green? Right. I'm wondering whether I can drop another colour into here. Okay, that's not doing what I expected it to. Maybe if I spritz that. See, spritzing doesn't really do a lot for me. Maybe I should use some stencils or something. I've pulled some out to play with. Hmm. Struggling a bit, guys. Struggling a bit. I picked that up because I think I've got way too much. Well, there's definitely too much ink on there. Okay, it certainly dries quick enough on here. Um, I'm getting something. Um, well, we're getting somewhere from there anyway. Sorry, excuse my arm. I'm trying to reach across. See, this is what gets me is this is still wet. And I'm used to alcohol inks drying very, very quickly. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reactivate what's on there and just put it onto this one. What harm can it do? Nothing at all. I've just added a little something to there. Right. So I wanted to see how we get on using a stencil. Actually, I'm going to use a mask. So I've got this funky leaf set by Ron, Rhonda Don, Doha. Doha? Okay. Sorry, Rhonda, I'm murdering your name. That's how you say it. And this is a mask set from PM Artist Studio. Now, leaf. I'm going to put it down and press it down so it's, it's in place. Now, I'm wondering... Right, use your instincts, Griffiths. Right. And I've put some red. I 
in there. And where is that? I don't want permanent rose, I want. Where do I put the yellow? No, put the yellow. So put some more yellow in the middle. And this is the yellow green. Kind of hoping this is going to give me almost like a stained glass effect. But what I am going to do, I'm going to use my fingers and I'm actually going to move this around. So I'm actually merging the colours. Now, because um, I press this down into the plate, I should be fine and it should, the suction of the mask, which is made of UPO, should be holding um, everything in place. I'm just going to go around the edge of this because I know it's going to stain my UPO. So why not make sure the thing is fully stained? Right. Um, where's that pot of alcohol gone? Yeah, I'm finding these are taking quite a while to dry. So I just want to blend some of this out. Because I want to put green on here. I like the way it reacts to alcohol. I'm not 100% certain what I was expecting from these. I do have an idea. Let me just get this one sorted out and then we'll play around with that idea. Right, I think I want to come in now. Where's that sap green gone? Where are you, Mr. Sap Green? That's yellow green. I had sap green somewhere, didn't I? Right, there's the sap green. I think I'm going to put green around the outside. And I'm going to use a cotton wool bud or earbud, whatever you call them in the country you're in. Just to move it around. I mean, I'm not expecting to create art. Well, I suppose everything you create is art to somebody. Right, that seems to take a long time to dry. I think what I'm going to do after this one, I've got an idea. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Ranger and these on the same plate next to each other and see what the drying time is. I can't pick it up. See, that seems to stay wet forever and a day. That feels like a long time to me. Let me just see if I can waft it. So, um, initially, colour's probably not as vibrant as I'm expecting them to be. Drying time, I'm feeling, is quite a long time. But as I said, I'll do a test of that in a few minutes. I'll pull back out that Ranger one. And, and take a look and see see where it's at. Now I could bring out a hairdryer on a gentle heat to dry this. Wonder whether that's an idea. Bear with me for a couple of seconds. Right, I've got just a little travel hairdryer here. I'm gonna move my good plate away because goodness knows I don't want to damage that. Now, I am going to mute the volume until I've actually done this okay i'm also going to blow hair uh, the air into my hand to pretty much dry this off okay so cover you don't have to cover your ears just know that the volume is going to stop now
and we're back with the volume. Right, I kept everything real, nothing has been sped up, so you've actually seen how long that took to dry. I do think that took a little while longer than I would have expected. Let's move those two over there. Um, let's just lift this up and see if I've got an outline. I bled under a bit, but I don't mind that. Um, let's just... I'm not going to waste the ink, no matter whether it's good, bad or indifferent. That gives me a bit of interest on there. Right, and the alcohol hasn't damaged my UPO stencil, which is good. Okay, so that's still a little wet. So, but I've got, I'm going to pick this one up with um, white acrylic paint. And I'm going to pick it up onto mixed media cardstock. And we'll see what we get. But we'll just absolutely see what we're going to get. I suppose if it was in a spray bottle, I don't need a lot. If it was in a spray bottle, maybe, I wonder whether that's an idea. I've got a spare spray bottle somewhere. There's a lot of paint on here, Griffiths. It's far too much paint. I just need a thin coat. Obviously the ink wasn't fully dry. I think we're going to get this down now. I'm going to leave this on here because it'll be fine, fine for a while. If it looks in danger of just drying out completely, what I'll do is I will stop the video and use it on something. So I'm going to give that a few seconds, a bit of a sneak peek. Okay, and well, it looks more intense because obviously my my plate was originally stained. Okay. Oh, good grief. That really is stuck to that, isn't it? And I really did clean my plates before I started. Like, I actually took this one to the sink and gave it a soft... Uh, a warm wash. Okay. That's not a hundred miles bad. It's definitely interesting. Hmm. Okay. So I think the intensity comes from, which way up did this go? Went that way. The intensity of colour comes from the amount of colour you put on there. Right, let's reach for. Right, this is Ranger and it's called Stream. Have I got something that's anywhere close to it? I very much doubt it. Let's go with the Cerulean. Actually, let's go with the Ultramarine. Right, let's see how this lot reacts. So, right. From the get-go, this feels more fluid. Right, let's put Ranger by. I think I'm gonna literally brayer up. Do I need a bigger brayer for this? Right, big Mama's coming out. Oh, big Mama's moved to one side. So my intent is not to ombre them, but to just put them side by side and see which one dries the first. Because as I said, I've got my suspicions that the alcohol content of the Hobbycraft one is not as high as the other one. But I could be wrong because I'm not really sure about inks. Okay, so they are drying. I mean, you can see the intensity, can you see it over there? The intensity of colour. And I did choose two that are quite bright. I 
I'm thinking this is definitely drying quicker. I mean, I don't want to touch it yet because I know it's not 100% dry. But if we look at this, this has already lost its wet sheen, whereas this still has a wetness to it. I mean, we've still got wetness here where it's heavier, but then it's heavier there as well. Right, this is beginning to dry here now, whereas this is pretty much dry. Yes, it was a fingerprint there, but I think it's the amount I put on there. Right. Yes, I don't want to bring the hairdryer in again. Let's just give it a bit of a waft of air circulation. Yeah, the Ranger one dries a lot quicker. I wonder whether it gives me any details. There's no details on there. Right, it doesn't give me any alcohol content, but I'm not sure that Ranger does either. But I definitely think the Ranger one dries quicker than that one. Right, we're going to pick this up and I'm going to put this on smooth white cardstock. Right, it's probably going to pick up some of the colour. I know that because it's not 100% dry. But just there in itself, it's slightly telling. You can see the blue's picked up, whereas the the stream hasn't. Let's put that down there. Just sit that down there and see what it looks like up against acrylic paint. I'm just going to pull that up because I can always use it for a background for something else. We're not going to waste anything here, people. So, interesting. Um, yeah, I'm wondering, I think whether I've got a spritz bottle somewhere. I probably have. I mean, you could easily, I mean, this is so fluid. You, put, you could put it into one of these, I'm certain, and spray it. I suppose if you do a mixed media pieces, as I sometimes do, well, as I mainly do, then spraying it would be an advantage. And I think I would probably put these into spray bottles before I did this sort of technique with them again. OK, well, that was interesting. I obviously left it on a little bit too long. Right. I'm not sure. I, I, still, I don't know what to say. I mean, I know this one dried quicker. I think it was because it's not a heavy cardstock. That's probably why, why it tore, because I left it on there too oft, long. OK, interesting yet again. I'm going to actually wipe on my plate because I want to make sure I've got the paper residue off there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play for a little bit just to see whether it's me just not being used to this. And that's another interesting thing too. If we look at this, the pigments from the Ranger one stained it and the other one did not stain it. So I'll pull off some of that with this. Not that I'm overly worried about this plate. Now, even with alcohol, the Ranger one is still still present okay so we're learning stuff right, let's take this off here and hopefully this won't tear this because this is mixed media cardstock i would be shocked if that tore there you go that cleaned up my plate lovely that'll become something in the future right so intensity was the secret that's what we found now i've got this set of sea turtle masks which I've had for probably a year and never used because I haven't got round to finding a project that I really wanted to use it for. And I think um, 
Fran on the Edge is based here in Britain, and I, I love I love her stuff. So I think I just want to give this a go. See if I can get any sort of look out of these using the inks. So I'm going to place them down. Again, pressing them down so they're suctioning to the plate. All right, so we've got mummy and baby. I'll probably do a couple of these looking at this. Now, I am wondering, instead of just, um, instead of putting it on and then wait you know, as a stained glass effect, whether I just put on the colour and brayer it over the top and see, see what happens there. So, right. Cerulean blue, a bit of ultramarine, and... A bit of yellow green, right? That should give me something Mediterranean ish. So, Some of these bottles are hard. I wonder whether there's a sweet spot on the bottle that's supposed to be softer. I know, oh, up here, that was a bit softer. I know that when I used to do cake decorating, there were some liquid colours for cake colours that came in bottles like this, and they had a strip that was softer plastic in one place. And I'm wondering whether this is what this is about. Right, um, let's just bray this out a bit in the middle. Throw this out a bit down here. And bring it a lot over there. I'm kind of using the techniques that I would normally use for acrylics now. I'm sort of braying it down and in. Um, I wonder whether I can... feeling there's not enough colour in there. Where's that sap green gone? The yellow green. I quite like the turtles to be green. If you've bought these yourself, I wouldn't mind hearing how you felt they worked. I wonder whether I should sort of waft it with this. I don't want to keep pulling the hairdryer out. I'm a bit, I'm very nervous of putting anything hot near my um, gel plates for the certain reason that yes, you can damage a gel plate because it can melt. And if you use a heat tool on it, you could potentially set fire to it. Not, not that I've ever tried that out and not that I've seen anyone do that, but there's definitely warnings out there of that. Right, it's going to take longer, right. Okay, we're going to have to do the volume off thing. So volume is now gone. And we're back. Okay, right, so that's on there. Now I think I should pull this one white with white, but I think if when I do the next one, because I'm gonna do another one with the turtles, because I've got other turtles, I like the turtles. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is maybe the next one, I'm gonna pull it with a color instead of white. I mean, I've got sort of pearly type ocean colors, like this one here, which is, what's this? 
pearl frosted mint that may look nice behind this so all the learning curve okay and smooth this up i love those as they are i'll stick them to something in the future right i can see that's not a hundred percent dry Yeah, I must admit, I have not known alcohol inks to take this long to dry before now. Right, that's, that's dry enough, I feel. Right, um, white acrylic. I hope you don't mind me taking you along on this journey of discovery, guys. It was literally me wanting to play. And when I was in Hobbycraft yesterday and actually saw these, I got really excited thinking, oh, affordable inks for once. But maybe there's a reason why Ranger inks are the price they are. Right, I'm going to put this onto the mixed media paper because I know that it's not going to tear on me. Yeah, the smooth white cards, uh, the smooth white card stock is just not robust enough, I think, when you let it sit for a while. It'd be fine for quick pulls as we've done quick pulls, but maybe not for this one. I'm going to let that sit for a second or two. Let's just pull this onto something. I've put it stick on here. It's not going to do any harm, is it? Yeah, never know. We might end up with something interesting happening. So. Yeah, just pushed it into the background. So, do I regret my purchase? No, actually, I don't. Um... I don't always need my alcohol inks to be hugely intense. Um, I do think if I put it into a spritz bottle, it would give me a different effect. I just wish I could find one. Okay, I just found them. I knew I had some somewhere. And what I do is when I go to like the pound store, I think you'd call it the dollar store, I tend to pick up the travel packs. Um, of the little bottles and they come in these containers so I think I'm going to pick up some more tumble colors out of these inks and actually just put them into there in not not now I'm going to do this after I've done the next turtle one so how do we do with this god this really sticks to this plate oh okay I'm happy with that I can work with that Yeah, I'm not I'm not upset by that. I mean, I'm regarding those two as relative successes, to be honest with you. Right, so I've got muck on this this already, so let's give that a little bit of a clean off. We're going to do one more turtle one. And um, while it's drying, see the range of staining is still there. Um, while it's drying, I'll then work on um, putting the inks in the bottles. So right. I've got three. I love these turtles, Fran. Thank you. They're wonderful, right? They don't necessarily need to be fully on the page. There's a little one, one too many. No, the little one could be mama, papa and, and baby makes three. Right, so they're on there. I think putting the... The ultramarine blue on there was wrong, but I think the other colours were right. So let's pull out the cerulean again. I like the lemon. Is that lemon? And where's that light green got? Yellow green. Right, I think I'm going to put the yellow green in the turtles because the turtles looked good in yellow green. Put the yellow in little patches. Now 
and put the cerulean blue more in the middle. All right, let's get the old brayer on these again. Now, I'm not putting much weight on this at all, guys. I'm not brayering this to within an inch of its life. That one's already moved around, so I don't expect him to be a very clean looking one. So I think I'm going to pull him off before I start, because as you can see, he moved. I am then going to use my finger as I did before to get the green into the turtles. Right. So I'm wondering what colours I want to put into these spray bottles. If I can put them in the spray bottles, actually, I'll just need to, that needs to just. Right, let's see how I can do this. Um, let's pull in some autumn colours this time. Orange. I've lost the yellow, yellow and scarlet, right? Can I get the tops off the bottles is going to be the first question. Okay, that's going to be tricky. Oh, actually, if I just tip it up down and squeeze it. So that's the yellow. Well, there's certainly solution enough to be added to a spray bottle. I suppose you could actually use these in an airbrush as well, if you happen to have an airbrush. And we do know what's going to happen now, don't we? I'm going to have this sprayed over everything. Um, that can go to one side. I have to put the swatch thing out of the way because I know I'm going to spray that. Um, my imagination but I am feeling that the back of the bottle is softer than the rest of the bottle as I said it could be my imagination I'm not sure all right so those are all prepped for our next bit so very very fluid but I expect ink to be fluid right okay we're gonna have to hair dry time again guys so sound off back with the sound right um, I was going to pull this with this colour, wasn't I? Just to see whether a coloured background would change the impact of it. Oh, I'm nearly out of this. Right. I'm not sure how well the pearlized will pull, but we're in experimental mode, aren't we? Again with the mixed media paper because that's what I prefer to use. Let's pull in this one to clean up this again for no other reason than it's there. You never know what what you will end up building up with. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit cautious and I'm going to cover my work surface with magazine pages because I've got magazine pages to one side um, for no other reason than I don't really want my entire surface covered with overspray from alcohol inks because they normally stain 
and I don't really want want them to stain. And this is purely in prep for the next bit. So do excuse the Vogue background, but it is what it is. Right, let's pull you off there. Again, didn't expect a lot. That just a little bit. Sorry, Madden, you're going to get blued. See what this looks like. Let's peel it off the backing. It's, I don't know why this paper is really suctioning to this. Okay, it's got potential. I think in the hands of someone who knows what they're doing, it would it would work far better than it is for me. Um, because, as I said, I've never used it on the gel plate. Don't really know what I'm doing. And I'm just trying to have a play. But then, you know what? If you're new to gel plating and you're new to alcohol inks, this is exactly what you would be experiencing as well. Um, and it can be quite disappointing when things don't give you the results you expect. But you know what? That's why we play. Right. So prepare to get messy, guys. Prepare to get messy. Right. So. OK. Let's add a little bit of green in the corner down here. Is that green? Yes, it is. Or it's orange at least. Okay, so spraying gives you a more even coating of everything. <laughs> of absolutely everything. Um, it is still wet, so let's just... I'm going to try and pull it on the smooth white cardstock. Okay, the spray gives you a reasonably good background. Let's try, let's try with the leaf again. So press that down so it's in contact with. Um, I have a feeling that the spraying a plate this small is a little bit wasteful. God, you can certainly taste it in the air, I can tell you. Oh. I need that to dry a little bit. It does dry quite quickly, though, I'm seeing. I mean, it's certainly making fun, fun papers. They'll get used at some point. I wonder if I pull that as is, because I don't mind that the leaf transfers. Right, I'm giving it a bit of a press down because obviously we've got the thickness of the UPO to deal with, which is a micron thick or whatever it is, or a mill not even a millimeter, I should imagine. I'm gonna get right down into that leaf. This is quite heavy cardstock, so. I will say my mixed media paper is 250 GSM. Let's see what we got to with that. Okay, that's interesting, right? I, I like that. I don't object to that. Let's get, I think this is the yellow on the go. And what about and pull it with a white, white smooth paper? I'm not sure how robust it's going to be for this activity, but it 
God, I can taste this stuff. My teeth are probably dyed yellow at the moment. Okay, um, I'm getting results that I would probably use in the future. Um, I'm also building up a bit of a long haul here. Another one of these poles. Yeah, I think I need to go back to the drawing board and actually look at what other people have done with this technique and with alcohol inks. Okay, that's getting there. I have an idea. That's the yellow green. If I put the yellow green Where's the middle of that bottle? Yeah, I think the middle of the bottle is softer at the back, about, about there. Right, I'll move that around my fingers. Thank God I'm not going to any meetings today or anything. Mind you saying that people who know me know what I do for a living. They kind of expect me to look slightly paint splattered. Right, and then I'm going to come in. That was yellow green. Let's put red on the corners. And then let's pull that with a mixed media one because that's really wet in there. As we can just see. Now, I'm not getting down into all of those gaps. I can see that just by the fact that the outline of the leaf is showing. Mm, not what I was hoping for. Right. I want to pick that up in a minute because I've got a feeling there may be an outline of the leaf underneath it. But I think I want to do one more pull, and this time more with the yellowy type stuff. I quite like what it does on the back of the Yupo. Now I'm not going to press down hard this time. I'm just going to run my fingers across it, just gently, because maybe... It was wrong to burnish it. Okay, that's interesting. I could certainly doodle into that. Let's, let's use the yellow again. And let's see if I do a similar technique with the smooth white cardstock. Just I'm not trying this with the turtles, by the way, because I've decanted these three and they're the only three sprays I've got. So to be able to do it with the other colour would just be a bit much. OK, I'm getting effects. I mean, I'm, I'm getting stuff. Right. If I come in with... bit of that. Right. Um, would it pick stuff up? Right, I've got a silicone texture mat here. Right, it will pull stuff off the plate. How much of that I'm going to see, I don't know. Let's wipe this off. It's probably like to get on my next art piece because this is my new favourite. OK. I think I need to hit this with a hairdryer and we're back. Right. This looks red through there, which is exactly what I wanted. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up with yellow. And I'm going to pick it up and put it onto a piece of 
mixed media cardstock and I'm hoping that the yellow acrylic I put on here is going to intensify what's already on there. So I've got um, cadmium yellow deep hue and I know this is quite a punchy yellow. Again, don't need an absolute ton of it. This is going to be the last one I do, guys. So let's hope we go out on a high. Put that down there. Pick some of this up. Because why not? It's on my plate. I might as well use it. Put that down there. Why did I do that? Why did I put my hand on a pile of wet paint? So while that's sitting there, let's see if I can remove these papers. If we go into the stash for collage. I wasn't planning on doing collage papers today, but I guess I have now. Yeah. At least I know um, hand sanitizer removes removes um, inks from both your skin and every, everything else because of the alcohol content. So um, I'll be doing that when I finish with you guys. Right, let's just take this one up because this is just a clean off. And I've got an interesting something I can stamp onto that. This one... Oh, sticks to everything. Let's take you out of the way because you're going to get all over the place otherwise. Now, I don't normally have to turn my paper over and pull the plate from the print, but for some reason it's really suctioning down. Okay, glad I did the yellow in the background because it really amped up the orange in that. Okay, right. Let's put some stuff to one side. Right, so in conclusion, let's just wipe that off because otherwise I'll get everything wet. In conclusion, let's have a pull of all of the prints we just did. Um, the first one, which was that messy one, didn't really work. I got some success later on when I was using the sprays. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. And that was just a background done with the spray. So all I did was I just decanted them into little spray bottles. And that, that was how I did that. How I'm going to get them back again is another, another problem. Um, using with the stencil did work. And this is the one with the pearl eyes back. I just needed to perfect the technique a bit. Like as proves there, it kept the background really white. I think I'm... I think they weren't adhered to the plate long enough. They, these didn't move, those did move. I quite liked that one. I seem to remember that was the one where I pushed the colour around my fingers. These were my first attempts. That was another clean up one. Um, this was the Ranger Go. Um, and again, it's okay. It, it proved to me that Ranger dries quicker than the Hobbycraft ones, which makes me really think there's more alcohol in here than there is in there. This was just a background I pulled up, which I wouldn't call a success. And this was the last print we did, which works really well. I, I can work with that. That's lovely. I can go in and maybe doodle around the edges of that. So, so we had some conclusions. Right. What would I say about it? Um, is it worth the money? I would say if you're beginner entry, 
and you're looking for, man for alcohol inks just to play with, then yes, £15 UK money for a pack of 12 of them, and they're each 15 mils in content. I think that works. I mean, but know your expectations, basically. If you just want to play with some inks for a little bit, making backgrounds and stuff, yes, maybe this is a good option, knowing how much the Ranger inks cost. I don't know the cost of other inks because I haven't bought them. I do know that you can get... Um, refill inks for ink markers so I don't know how those compare in price um, this was my little swatch sheet I found them quite dull I think possibly that's down to the paper I used although I must admit even using them on smooth white cardstock that that's not that punchy and that's what I kind of expect from alcohol inks um, I don't know I I don't consider it a fail because there's stuff within this equation like I don't know what I'm doing. I've I've never used inks on a gel plate before. I've watched a couple of videos um, and had a go. I've got some successes, so I, I'm almost certain in the right hands, then then we'd have some great successes. It just happens to be in my hands. They aren't necessarily great successes. Like, I could now come in, put acrylic paint on the plate, lift it off with the leaf, and then put the leaf on here and then re-establish the leaf. So, yeah. Um, sort of mid-range on this one, I think. Um, if I'm doing some serious art pieces, I would buy better quality um, alcohol inks. If I just want to play around with a few techniques I've seen or maybe discolor some metal pieces to look like other stuff or age things or just create the odd background. I mean, the sprays worked well. I mean, if you had a whole selection of these bottles, you could very easily um, decant them. If you've got an airbrush, you could use them in an airbrush. I mean, I don't see any reason why these wouldn't go through an airbrush. I mean, if they're going through one of these, almost certainly going through an airbrush. So I'm going to leave it at that, I think, guys. Um, hope you didn't mind me turning this on for a play. Partly I wanted to test whether the earbuds microphone works. So remember, if the sound quality is good, please give me a thumbs up so I can actually know that the earbuds work. Um, if you still struggled with hearing the earbuds, please let me know in the comments. Um, I will obviously be editing this video and I'll take out the indecision times and the cleanup times. So you'll see that. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye bye now.